I guess I just wanted to welcome everybody. Uh, this is the third community conversation we've done. Um, and I wanted to kind of mention that this one is special to me uh, because uh, we're going to talk with Burns Without Borders North Texas. And actually, BWB North Texas uh, is really the inspiration for this community conversation uh, series in general. Uh, so, you know, for those of you who don't know, Texas is the first place that created a regional event. They're the first uh, regional area that had a regional contact. And so, in a lot of ways, Texas has been leading the Greater Burning Man Network um, over many, many years, uh, inventing a lot of stuff. And BWB North Texas, I mean, what, there's five regional BWB groups in Texas at this point, which is more than anywhere else. Um, and BWB North Texas has done some really amazing work in enrolling community leaders, in, in having act, a super active chapter with people taking on different projects. And what happened was, is community leaders kept on coming to us and saying, hey, how do I do this? And I kept on pushing them over to Sousa and, and Amber and saying, hey, you should talk to them. And in conversation, they were like, hey, you know, it takes a lot of energy to keep on having these conversations with all these community leaders. And so that's when we came up with the idea of doing these community conversations. So anyways, that's the real quick intro. And I just wanted to say, uh, Amber and uh, Sousa, thanks so much for calling in. And thanks for inspiring this whole series in general. Thank you. Thanks, yeah. Breedlove. That was super nice of you. I, but it, I think it is easier sometimes for us because we're not all on the same schedule to be able to listen to a recording or watch something or take a look at the slideshow later. and do it on your own time and this is so much easier for us to have a conversation with the whole group all at once and you know make the most of our, our time so uh, we made a little slideshow for you so that we can talk about some things yes yeah um, maybe let's do introductions real quick yes so you are Susa I'm Susan Cannon. I'm the uh, the director for our uh, for burners with the borders North Texas We've been around since four years, I think now. Mm -hmm. And this is Amber Terry. Hello. So Susan really started everything. She's the, she's um, the smart one. <laughs> <laughs> I try to keep our finances organized, but um, I found uh, Burners Without Borders um, just sort of accidentally. I had uh, been wanting to go to Burning Man for, for many, many years since uh, I think the mid 90s uh, when I first heard about it and it finally came together in 2014. I had no idea that there was this local network and I was like, I'm gonna make a difference. I was really fired up and sure enough, I Googled it as soon as I got home from my first burn and there happened to be a meeting two blocks over that weekend. So it's just sort of meant to be um, and here we are today. She brought cheese. I knew she was okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, I, uh, I, I've been going to burn since 2008 and most of it is regionals like Flipside, which in, is the one of the first regional burns for sure. And it's like 2,700 people. So it's a pretty large temporary city. And then um, I, in my day job, I have worked for nonprofits since 2005, since Katrina. And now I work as a grant writer for a homeless shelter and several homeless shelters actually. So some of the things that I have put into practice here are things that I've learned from my other job and you know with that through that filter of burneriness <laughs> so that we can like because it you know uh, sometimes we are the first people that the first burners that people meet in the community and they may have preconceived ideas based on what they've seen in the media and it really is interesting. We have people when we go on these, we're really a, a volunteer service organization, you know, a lot of what we do is gifting time and when we do that sometimes we'll go out in a group to help with whatever charity we're helping that time and somebody will say, are you guys doing community service tattoos and blue hair and stuff and we're like, no, we just we like doing this stuff and we have t-shirts which burn uh, which miss amber has on yeah. yeah and we did that just uh we sold them but it was just to have the money to buy them really and whatever profit we had went towards 
you know, keeping uh, our bank account open and stuff like that. So anyway, so today the, we're going to talk about the stuff on the screen. We're going to talk about ways that you can uh, create a communication plan to help your uh, to help your chapter grow so that uh, you can keep your finger on the pulse and uh, really help everybody know what's going on and when. And we're gonna talk about membership, uh, how it should be about radical inclusion and it's a duocracy by the people that show up, making an impact and creating projects and getting people involved to take ownership as leads, how to like kind of encourage them to do that. Yeah, stuff, ninjas, blah, 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 promote so people know, and project ideas from other communities. So one of the great things about having these community conversations is we can inspire each other and um, help each other think about new ways to serve the community and to serve the party and to keep people interested. And so it's great that we're having these conversations. Next slide. Yeah, so communication stuff is really important. We, in, not only do you wanna have officers and burners without borders, but you would, should really have a, a social media lead or somebody that likes to make images and stuff like that because it's super handy because then it's not all falling on the people that are doing some of the other organizing. And it kind of like helps spread the love and gets people invested in Burners Without Borders and you have a crew and not just one or two of you. Anyways, there's a bazillion ways to do communication. The important thing is to let people know how to contact you and you want them to know um, like when your stuff is happening. So have a calendar, sometimes you, it's a list that's pinned to the top of your Facebook group whatever works, whatever people's looking at. That way they can be lazy and just go visit every once in a while. Like, oh, what are they up to? Oh, this is a thing. I should put it on my calendar. Their stuff is awesome. It totally works. Make it easy for them. So some people do free websites like Wix or whatever. There's Facebook, Insta, all those things like that. Um, GroupMe is a really wonderful group text messaging thing. It's free. You can use it for your officers and the people that are uh, like your if you have a volunteer coordinator that kind of helps drum up the troops and does scheduling when you have big events that there's time slots just like you would have at a burn. Yeah, a lot of the stuff is just based on, based on the hierarchy stuff that you have at a burn. Yes, ma'am. Um, do, do you have a software recommendation for sending mass texts? Yes, this is what I told somebody last week is, um, you Google mass text free <laughs> or mass texting service free, you'll find like 50 zillion of them. The one I have is so cheap that it's like everybody has the same number. <laughs> it's like you text uh, Figment to 88202 and you're on mailing list. But then like there's a rave group that uses it and these goth kids and I'm <laughs> so people that are on multiple lists get this weird Google it. There's tons of them. They, they're perfectly reasonable. You can have wonderful contact lists and you can sort the, the groups and things like that. And it's really handy. It's very flexible. Y'all have used Slack before, I'm sure. <clears throat> the mass texting is good. Don't spam them. Don't turn it into a chat channel. Like really minimal. This is where the thing is at a month before. And this, oh yeah, that thing is happening tonight. And that way, that's really all they need. We use Google Calendar and iCalendar. We try to keep it updated. And that way people can just add it to their, you know, their own calendar. And then they always know what's going on with the Burners Without Borders. And then we made, you want to tell them about the sign that we made? It's a big wooden sandwich board. It's like six foot tall, five right. foot tall. So it fits in a vehicle. Right. And I don't know who has it right now. Because I do. Oh, great. It's in my garage. <laughs> I chased, got it back last week. We definitely have chased it around some. But, it goes to um, burns that I don't go to sometimes. Right, right, right. So uh, pretty much there's always someone going to one of the regional burns and we can just coordinate them to bring it out, put it out somewhere in, um, you know, a viewable area. And we definitely see a significant uptick in new member requests on our Facebook group. Uh, right after burns. So we know that, you know, we're making the impact out there. People are talking about it. Um, yeah. And 
uh, you know, there's also the option to have a burger at that worst camp as well. And Some that people, that's is another great times. place for the sign to live. Especially when there's uh, five re five different regional burners without borders in Texas. Sometimes we all end up at the same burner. It's like, hey, I want to camp together. Sure, mm -hmm. why not? And we drag out our, our sign and it's got contact information. It's got our Facebook address. It's got, you know, all that kind of like our email address, all those things that you need. And, you know, it's got some glow in the dark paint on it, <laughs> the logo, some reflectors so people don't drive over it like you do, you know. Yeah. One quick comment that I wanted to make, uh, going back to the Facebook groups, and some of you have probably created events within groups and run into this problem before, but if you haven't, want to let you know about it just so that you don't run into that and make that same mistake. If you create an event within a group, then you can only invite the members within that group. So we've had much better success creating a public event that an individual creates, and then you share that event within that group and within other burner groups. Uh, otherwise, it sort of limits your reach of people. So just a heads up on that. Bigger reach. Can I have the next slide, please? Um, before you do, I wanna be the voice of the chat box for one more communication question, which is sure. from Sarah. Um, and she said that she's been searching for a mass text service and all of the ones that are free um, are only free up to five participants is what she's been finding. So she'd be interested in hearing the exact service if anyone well, has had success, even with a paid service. I pay 10 bucks a month and I use mobile mix. <gasps> Told you my secret. I'm only saying it once, but yeah, but it's, it's like Can 10 bucks a month. Mobo? What? mix <laughs> but if you i mean you don't you hopefully other people in your neighborhood won't be using it very much and you won't have the same problem that i am so um yeah so we were talking about membership so we have this catchphrase that we use when we promote our events and it says in asterisk uh, need not be a BWB member to attend any Burners Without Borders event. And we've had people come to our events and go, you know, I saw that phrase and I was like, oh, I thought I needed to know a secret handshake or, I, you know, I needed to pay a due. And it's like, nope, if you show up, you're a member that day. Great. You know, and so it allows us to combine forces with other groups and really multiply the efforts that we have because it's really about inclusion and making people feel welcome and not making it feel exclusionary or clicky or anything like that. You really want people to welcome. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times uh, we've had people tell us that they're burner curious friends that are like interested. They haven't really done it yet. They'll come to a BWB meeting. Sometimes we have kid friendly ones and it's you know, a great little uh, springboard into some other burn stuff, you know. Definitely. Yeah. So the other thing we do with meetings is we try to make it somewhere where it's fun because if you just put a meeting request out there and it's at someone's house or at a public space, like in a boardroom. Yeah, it sounds really chairs. boring. Like we, nobody likes boring. So we try to make it fun. So let's do an activity. Let's do something fun. Let's make Craft it crafty. Let's have a pool let's party. Let's googly eyes Let's make tacos. Let's have brunch and mimosas or We you had know, whatever. patch sewing day where we taught people how to sew patches onto things because they're the new hotness lately. And people were bringing like their battle jackets and some people made a sash like they were like a beauty pageant winner and we were learning how to sew but it was really so i could sneak in a business meeting for burners without borders uh i, I firmly believe the best meetings involve a pool or a hot tub mm -hmm. i think you'll find that also to be true yeah we definitely get our biggest attendance in fact at our pool parties we probably have um you like, know. are we really having a meeting for an hour yes All right the anywhere from about 30 to 55 people come it's a big deal and then we end up getting new voices from the community new, new suggestions new ideas new, new volunteers right they definitely get excited about fresh it fresh blood yes so the most important thing that you should take away from this conversation about meetings is what we do is we try and do things on, on, on our best days we try and do things on a schedule like meet twice a month so once for a meeting and then once for a work day right and so the work days we try and mix it up where we go but with the meetings we try and do it at a different place every time so one person doesn't have to bear the burden of being the host person all of the freaking time 
really big on potlucks because people like snacks. Uh, we'll piggyback on other events that are in the community and like have our meeting after theirs in the same location just because it helps people roll over and it's not so complicated. They didn't even have to move their car. So stuff like that works, but you have to still keep it professional. You like, sh I put your top back on during the meeting, <laughs> whatever, you know, we don't care. We're burners anyway. And in the South, we have a tendency to be less modest than the rest of you guys. Anyway, because it's hot down here. So yeah, but have somebody like keeping the minutes, re re taking notes and recording all those ideas, write a list of the people that showed up. And then later when you're like, who is the person that was talking about that one thing, you can go back and you can follow up on those good ideas. And like we, one of the products of that is we keep a list of potential projects. Like, ooh, wouldn't it be cool if we went and did a, a cleanup day on a, a, a trail or something and so-and-so says, oh, I live over there, I'm gonna do that. Mm -hmm. If we don't have time to do it in the next couple of months, like we've got a full dance card and we have lots of other things planned already, we gotta do it later. Keeping that list as part of your minutes about potential ideas, you'll have somebody come in later and go, well, I love that thing. That's the thing that's the closest to me. I really want to make that happen and they will make that happen. So not only do we mix up who is leading the hosting the meetings, but we mix up who's hosting the projects and that way you have these rotating leads that come in and take ownership of it and do the contact between you and the group that you're helping out or you and whatever that project is, but really takes ownership and picks the day and like makes it happen and encourages that promotion. So it's not just the leader talking all the time, but you hear fresh voices on a regular basis. Right. And not necessarily everybody is going to volunteer for that. But the great thing is if you put the word out on Facebook, we're looking for somebody to host this or that, then you know, people generally tend to volunteer. Um, and Who's or, got a pool? Yeah, you can ask conversations as well. Um, <laughs> we have done also uh, Google group chats as well during the meetings. Um, we try to be conscientious yeah. of the fact that not everybody can always make it on whatever that day is, do whatever their schedule is. So um, that's why it's really important that uh, we make that available. And also, um, you know, recording the minutes as we already talked, not losing that brainstorm and really capturing that information, putting it back out there uh, so that other people can read and engage and, and kind of be a part of what we've been doing. Yeah, absolutely. And the, the Google Hangouts or Skype or whatever you want to do is really handy because for us, uh, North Texas is, it, we're, you know, we're sitting in Dallas right this very second, if you're curious what the heck we mean by North Texas. However, North Texas is really Dallas, Fort Worth, and Denton. There's a little trifecta there. And we're, we're spread across. We have members that are active in six counties. So like some of you have Santa Con where you guys live and we have Santa Con here too and we take the train, but um, Denton also has Santa Con and so does Fort Worth. So we have a presence at all three Santa Cons where we set up uh, like a, a canned good donation for the food bank and we have a, an elf <laughs> volunteer that meets at the first stop and like picks up all the canned goods and puts them in their car and then takes them to the food bank letter and they each get a little receipt for the weight they'll weigh them for you when you bring them in and so we have a friendly competition between the three counties about who santa is going to bring us food and it's it's fun <laughs> it's silly mm -hmm. anyways next so slide um i want to just pause real quick and be the voice of the chat box because uh as you were talking about recording ideas and keeping the brainstorms going and keeping the list going nick prince um, from new mexico just added that we shouldn't take creativity for granted a lack of volunteers is normal but when it happens have a brainstorm list ready to go absolutely Absolutely. So you want a brainstorm list of who your hot volunteers are and you want a brainstorm list of what kind of things could we do? Because some things you're like, oh yeah, we just call and find out what day they'll be there and we can go and do the thing. They have a work day every month and they're always looking for people. Let's go help them out. We don't have to always reinvent the wheel. It's that's why sometimes it's nice to go and help people that are already established. But there's going to be times that we need to reinvent the wheel because we're burners and we're innovative like that. 
And so, you know, you want to have that flexibility. And there's a lot to be said about having one cause that is your cause, and that's what you guys do all the time. And some uh, other regional burners without borders, that's their thing, and that's a beautiful thing, but you do run the risk with a little bit of burnout with that. So, one, you get really coolly embedded and really make a lot of momentum happen, but you risk a little bit of burnout. So sometimes it's nice to have another thing. Like if we're doing a really heavy kind of emotional thing, kind of um, volunteer day, we'll like definitely roll that in with, you know, we should have Mexican food and margarita after this. I think that we should meet up and have snacks and, you know, lighten it up a little bit and make it fun. So this is some pictures from one of our meetings. We were talking about ideas we did. Somebody hosted this and she's a professor that teaches ceramics and we had our business meeting here. Can we have the next slide please? Yeah. Thank you, Christopher. So we're talking about there's different types of projects. Like it doesn't always have to be raising money. It doesn't always have to be volunteering to sweat and do stuff for people. There's lots of different ways. Sometimes donations doesn't mean money. Sometimes it's an in-kind donation where it's stuff. So yeah, yeah, for example, we collected a lot of toiletries for the Rape Crisis Center uh, because every time they have someone come through, they try to, uh, right. you know, allow them some, some dignity kits, to get cleaned up, socks. you know, fresh socks and things like that. Absolutely. Same thing with the Santa thing we were talking about where we were raising stuff for the food bank. So it's not necessarily asking for money, though when we promote it, we do have a tendency to post because I don't want other people's money. If I can help it, it burns my hands. I would rather just uh, put a link to that charity's donation site. And when I'm going, hey, Santa's gonna be at the first stop collecting stuff. By the way, if you don't wanna bring a can good on Santa this year, you can just make a donation and then you're, you know, you're awesome too. So I, I, sometimes I don't want a middleman a donation. We just wanna support a cause, especially with disaster stuff because there's auditing involved and you kind of want to know what happened to your money at the end of the day. And sometimes letting the other charity do that is easier. Anyways, so, uh, so what are we talking oh, So some of the rules, the things that, it's not a rule, it's just a good guideline that we do in North Texas that has been helpful to us is we look at these projects as either it's going to be gifting service, gifting time, money or in kind, but uh, we also try and avoid certain kinds of projects because they're overly complicated and it's just, mm. so we tend to not do things that are for super religious causes, even though we're will help out, you know, a mission a, like a homeless shelter that is also a Christian based way. So I'm fine with that, but I don't necessarily want to be there while they're preaching. I don't want to ask anybody else to have to do that. No, no judgment. Just for us, we choose not to do religious causes and we choose not to do anything that's super political. We don't like um, advocate for certain like political candidates and stuff because that gets weird and sticky with the IRS and I just don't need that kind of stress in my right. life. We're and, also very careful to not do specific projects that are supporting individuals uh, because- uh, Auditing. Yeah, auditing and it, and it gets difficult to figure out who, you know, who are you gonna support, who are you gonna, not how support. long do you support them right, right. how long will they be sick for and the so thing we try is to just support other 501c3 charities for the most part i will repost your gofundme for your sick person or the person whose house is burned down or all the other personal things but i don't want the personal responsibility of having to be accountable for how you chose to spend the money Mm -hmm. And sometimes that happens when you give to actual humans instead of organizations and it gets really weird. So we'll share other people's um, stuff and we'll support them personally and, you know, we'll definitely encourage people to do those things, but we don't necessarily sponsor those any ourselves. We kind of, we've chosen not to do that. Yeah, like because you have the person that's sick and you raise the money and they spend it on their dog and you're like, oh. And people go, but I thought you raised all that money for them. And it's like, we did. I don't. Uh, anyways, next slide. <laughs> <laughs> so there's certain, there's a few projects we're going to talk about that we've done in North Texas that I would love to see all of you do in your community. And you can in the United States because some of these are national projects. This is from the uh, annual point in time homeless count. 
almost every single county, in, well, legally, every single county in the United States has a homeless count. It's usually in January in a cold ass month in the middle of the freaking night, like nine, 11 o'clock. Yeah, and it's usually on a Thursday or something. So getting volunteers is a little weird because it's a school night, but it's a wonderful project. The numbers, you go around like Pokemon Go for human beings and they give you an app and you look for people and they give you this cool map like we have here that show you um, reported homeless encampments and they like divide out the map of the entire city and they give you your quadrant and you go on people safari and you look for humans and you talk to them and provide them like a hygiene kit and some water and a bus pass and a little booklet that tells them where they can get help but you put their information in the app and the numbers that are totaled that night are what all the charities in your city use to get funding from the federal government and everybody else to talk where you hear the numbers from homelessness. They came from this count in January and they do it every year and they have for years and it's a good thing. So it's free to participate in. It's really well organized. They're amazing and it's a great opportunity to um, to like get involved and see how it all works together in the big picture. Can we have an next slide please? Next slide. So we also help uh, with this is a gardening day. We usually try and do this in a spring. This is uh, an interesting one because we were raising money for a uh, animal shelter, the no kill animal shelter. We did it at a nightclub. Everybody dressed up like cats. We like passed around the donation jar there and raised money. And then the next day, next slide, Oot. we went to the kitty shelter and we volunteered as kitty socializers because in animal shelter, if the kitties don't get socialization, they won't be very adoptable. So they need people to come and pet the kitties and little kids can come. So it was a kid friendly work day. And I just wanted to be able to put kitties in the slide today as a break from just listening to me talk about blah, 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 IRS. Kitties, that was a very well attended volunteer day too. Right. <laughs> Next slide. But I, I think what you guys can probably see just from looking at some of these slides is we try to do things that are like burnery and for a good cause. So let's not just like um, be miserable you know, go do and a suffer. work day making sandwiches, but let, you know, yeah. which we have done that and those are great. Um, but let's, you know, let's do some things where we can make it fun too. Uh, there was another project that we did for the Lions Club where uh, we sort of organized Bad a librarian bar hop, yeah. where we dressed up like dirty librarians and went to bars in an entertainment district and asked, well, we called them ahead of time, but we asked them about uh, taking the old eyeglasses from their lost and found right. box. Because every bar and has a box that's them had to glasses Club. in it for years that nobody ever picks up. So why not, you know, put those back? Restaurants, bars, everybody. And we had already called the manager and go, hey, we're going to do this thing. We'll come pick them up. And they were cool about it. And the few people that donated money into our jar that paid for the shipping to send them to the recycling center. And they send those glasses all around the world to people that can't afford to buy glasses. So this picture, sometimes we don't just help other people's charity. A lot of times we, you guys have done projects where you're like, we're going to raise money for this thing ourselves. And we're going to do that. And we've done that too. Mm -hmm. So these are pictures from our, uh, the five fundraiser, which was in November, and it was for a tiny house project for the homeless that an organization was doing. And we raised like two, three grand, something mm -hmm. like that. And it was a one night event and you could buy two different tickets. You could buy tickets to the dinner, which was a five course meal made by a different chef. So one chef didn't have to make everything. And we also had volunteers like wash dishes and stuff. And then you could buy the second ticket, which was for the after party and it had art and music and stuff like that. Next slide. And people donated the food and the ingredients. And this is some of the art and the installations and things like that. Somebody brought an inflatable little thing that you can see on the uh, corner there where everybody's all laying around. <laughs> it's an inflatable building with lights and stuff. Next <laughs> slide, please. So you, you can do burnery things, it, uh, but you have to like, um, you have to figure out a way to package it so that you can raise the money. So that's like the cow. So I, I don't know if you guys remember the gifting report that came out a few years ago where we were asking you once a year like what your projects were about. 
I, sorry, not sorry. It's good for you to write it down. You should write down how many volunteers you have. You should write down how much money you made, how many socks you collected or whatever, how many pounds of food you did because it kind of helps you be accountable to yourself and have goals, but it's also transparency y'all and that's good stuff because that's how your community builds trust with you. Because if they just see you taking money and they really don't understand where it goes, it's going to start freaking them out and you don't want to deal with that rumor mill. It's no fun. Trust me. Right. Next slide. Mm -hmm. So another thing that we did with that five uh, fundraiser dinner party is uh, we didn't plan this in advance, but around the time that the party was about to take place, everything was going on with uh, Standing Rock. And as a community, we made a decision to split off a portion of the funds and we voted to send them uh, through national so that we can also support those efforts. So we do like to listen to our community and engage them. And if the people want something, then why not you know, give it to them if everybody is in majority agreement. So Absolutely. Uh, that was good to make that impact as well. It went to the composting toilets. And then like the next month, uh, Taylor did a, a donation drive at a nightclub and he raised a passed around the hat and raised almost a hundred bucks and sent it to the medic tent because I have a, a lady friend that was working in the medic tent and with her organization and it was like we should send them some stuff for some mailocks and stuff to you know for the some some band-aids which wasn't really helpful but uh it was nice mm -hmm. it was nice to be able to take a portion of that and send it beyond our borders so sure. next slide so this is another one of those national projects we've been talking about. So if any of you are rangers and do that kind of stuff, then you may have already heard about this. But this is a national program that's done through FEMA. It is in every county in the United States for safety reasons. But it's called CERT, C-E-R-T. And they, it's this program that uh, trains you for disaster preparedness. So not only does it give you the, it's free, you can, uh, you start with just a couple of online classes. There's four parts. You do the two online classes, and then the third one is more in person, and then the fourth one is like a, uh, a crisis simulation where everybody's got fake blood and things are pretend blowing up. Yeah, it's awesome. So you should totally do it because it's going to give your volunteers an opportunity to become more engaged in the community around you so that when they're doing disaster stuff or something bad happens unfortunately in your neighborhood you've already got people plugged in that can tell you where to go and to do the volunteer and to meet the refugees and to bring sandwiches and maybe some funk music because that's what we do <laughs> yeah. so we had a group uh, meeting with the uh where we did the first ics training together and it was really beneficial because a lot of people need this that had leadership positions in the burn there were uh, so a lot of uh, regionals asked the rangers to have the ics training because if you do have an incident at your burn this is actually going to be required by the leos yeah is that so some of your leads have this training. So by Burners Without Borders supporting this kind of CERT training, not only does it help out the community, but it builds better burn volunteers and makes our burns safer. Right. So we actually had an event where we had everybody come. I think we had brunch. I don't remember. Yeah, um, brunch exactly. But yeah, uh, so we had a group of, <laughs> group of people and we just did it all together and took the test afterwards and it was all pretty easy and didn't take that long. Absolutely. Next slide. Minimizing burnout. So if you Google disaster fatigue, you can read some really heart wrenching stories about people that work so much that they fell down because we're only made of flesh and blood. You cannot pour from an empty cup. You must put on your own air mask before giving assistance to others. It's real life. Don't become a statistic. So there's different ways that you can kind of keep people excited about getting involved with Burners Without Borders. One of the other regional leads had this great catchphrase of serve the party, where you like make it fun, where you have an after thing for your hard work time. And that way you get to spend people time with each other and not just sweaty time together, but both. Yeah, we talked about rotating the host locations. Like once every six months, we would get together at a meeting and ask everybody at the meeting, can we host at your house? Can we host at your house? And just fill up the dance card really quick and figure out what our schedule is going to be and do it all at once. And sometimes we would do that with the projects as well. Oh, you want to do the, the trail cleanup? Great. 
and you want to do the donation drive for, you know, the animal, you do all that stuff and then everybody kind of knows what to expect for the next few months and it just kind of rolls along. It's actually less work at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So take breaks and times off. We don't meet every single month and you know what? I don't feel bad about it. Like we, in the beginning, the first year we always took off in the summertime for us. And it allowed us to recharge our batteries, to get excited about it, to miss each other. And then we'd come together and do these projects and be like, oh, while we were gone, there was this thing and I really want to do it. So, it, you know, it's okay to take a break every once in a while. Don't feel bad because you missed one month's meeting or y'all didn't miss like, it's okay. You are still a good person and you can make things happen. So send out a message and they will show up. And if they don't, then you'll have a great time by yourself with the people that came with you. Yeah, so I definitely good, noticed too, anytime we go through a break time, uh, we'll be at other Vernon social events and, and people will come up to us and they're like, hey, What's it's going on? Thing. We haven't seen anything. I've got this idea. When can I talk about this? And, and you know I, what I say? Great. Then you should do it. You should totally <laughs> get on there and tell us what your thing is. Hey, pick a date for it. Right, Ooh, right. Look what you did. You made this thing up. Well, and this goes back to kind of like we were talking originally duocracy. about, yeah, the duocracy, because uh, <laughs> a lot of times we have people that are new to the organization and they come to us and to they're brain. like, what are you guys doing? Like, what's, what's happening next? Let me know what's coming. And, and, you know, we kind of turn the conversation around a little bit and be like, well, what would you like to do or how would you like to be involved or yes. here's a list of great projects. Would you like to lead it? And then we sort of explain the concept and they're like, and then you see the light this bulb belongs go off. to me. Yeah. This isn't your thing. Right. And you're just holding space so we can make the thing. Yes. Ah, okay. <laughs> Next slide. <laughs> So this brings us to the topic of volunteer appreciation. Say thank you to people and, and be nice. Don't like, they're, you're not paying them. They choose to be there. So be cool to them. Try and make it easy for them. Consider their bio needs. Don't get mad at them if they don't show up. Do not guilt them if they didn't make it to their time slot on time. Just be glad that they're there and when they show up say thank you and that's enough. And so once a year we try and do this thing where it's usually after the holidays like the beginning like the first couple of weeks of January or something where we'll have a party at somebody's house. And it's meeting it's not really a meeting it's the volunteer appreciation party and it's a potluck and we have music it's very intimate in a way and it's for everybody that's been part of you know our events in the last year but um, Amber here made this awesome certificate that you see on your screen and we give it to people that have chosen to lead a project that month where it was their idea, they became the point man, they contacted the thing, they set the date, they told their friends, they actually showed up that day. Very important. I happened to date a really great designer, so I can't personally take credit for that. Yes. He is the one that made these really cool patches um, and that project lead certificate. So thank you, Scott Powers. It's a fabric embroidered patch mm -hmm. and we, uh, uh, it's great because we've had people that are so it has a jackalope on it if it's too small for you to see, which is not a real creature, but it's super fun. <laughs> so we, 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 you know, Scott made this awesome patch for us and people are like, I don't want a jackalope patch. I'm like, we had to lead a project. <laughs> is there a day that you want to do a thing? And we've had people from far away that are like, I, I want to drive 10 hours and lead a project just so that I can get a jackalope patch. Shalia, you need to come to North Texas, girl. I didn't forget. Anyways, so, so you, you need to do things every once in a while to break the tension, to not make it political, to just be cool. And at some point in the project, I do this really lame, boring thing where I read the, all the whole list, the gifting report. I read what we did each month, who the project lead was, how many people showed up, and what the outcome was that thing I was telling you, you need to keep a list of. And it goes on a little long, but you know, we take drinks in the middle of it. It's totally fine. But it uh, afterwards, we've had people say that it really meant a lot to them that their thing was recognized, especially if it didn't turn out as big or only two people showed up. But the fact that they made an effort is why we're like, they're in the, they made the list. They made something happen that day. And that's more than that group had before we showed up. 
So next slide, please. Transparency. So yeah. this is Amber's slide because she's the treasurer and she keeps all of our numbers in a row. Right. So uh, really putting the information <laughs> out there without having people ask for it is key. Uh, we probably overshare um, and I, I think, you know, that's really helped us with, um, you know, we haven't had uh, to deal with um, a lot of inquiries about what are we doing, where are we spending our money, because it's all out there in public view. Uh, all of our event dates are posted. Um, we have galleries in our uh, Facebook group that has um, our documentation for receipts for uh, any checks that we've issued to any charities, any receipts that we've received um, for a donation, as well as any projects that we had that required costs. Like, for example, we did that big five dinner fundraiser. We had food we had expenses and some other things. Right. So, uh, so all of the receipts get posted. It's all out there. Um, it's really important um, for me also to uh, bring our documentation to every meeting that we've got. Uh, I have our bank statements with me and all of our financial records in case anybody would like to take a look. Here you go. Um, so we do a treasurer's report in every meeting. So we talk about what funds we have, what funds we've spent money on since the last meeting and um, what maybe we have that is outgoing as well. So we do a brief recap uh, at every meeting so everybody knows what we've got. And that also helps actually to encourage fundraising as well because some people are like, well, you guys should have more money than that. <laughs> We're like, great. <laughs> I'm glad you think so. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so the tracking systems are, are really important <coughs> for that. Um, Susan and I have a joint account, so there's some transparency two and visibility. Two people, two signers. Yeah, that I think don't date each other. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> exactly. Carry on. <laughs> uh, also, um, we've definitely undertaken, as we've talked about before, some larger product projects. Uh, not only the dinner fundraiser, but we're doing a big party for the AIDS uh, Resource Center. Yes, coming With up the drag in September. Show. So and a dance party. it required a venue deposit. Uh, we may have some money for fire uh, if we can get that approved. Um, but there are other costs that go Eagle in, fire. a little bit of decoration, insurance. sounds, things like that. So yes. Insurance. Can we talk about insurance really quick? Sure. So when you rent a venue, sometimes you are actually use, you're renting the use of their property insurance. When you do an event in a private home, you also fall under that homeowner's insurance policy when you do stuff that is larger than a certain size in your state, then you have to buy event insurance and it is worth every penny because you know who's going to be sued if anything happens? You are. It's not <laughs> national. They love you. They'll send you like, like, a, like a greeting card, but it's really up to you to be mindful of your risks and like be calculated about it. And you know, you're remember that you have people say that you're you're taking care of. And there's ways to manage that depending on what your event is. But we do get questions about how the insurance works out for some of this events, and that's basically it. So gifting report. We send this in once a year. I think it makes Breed Love and Molly happy because we're actually keeping them apprised of what the hell's going on in their name. Right. Susan's got a great experience <laughs> here because she has uh, all of the grant writing experience and she understands what uh, people want to see about what impact we're making. So uh, later on in this uh, slide deck, we've shared a link to where you can go to our original if you want to copy it, that's fine. But this is a basic outline. It's important to know uh, not only how much money we collected, but also the in-kind um, donations maybe that we have collected and distributed, as well as the total number of volunteer hours is really important as well. Absolutely. So, and I'm back when there was a time where others were using this format as well, because it was something that National chose to send out, and I really appreciate it, because I, I think it is a good practice for us to be in, because it helps you remember where you've been, and if years later somebody else is leading, they can go, what was that thing we did that was really fun? But mm -hmm. one thing that I saw some people get confused about when they were filling in theirs was this last link on the end. Not notes, but the, li the link, because it's not about the link to your Facebook event or to the thing you made to promote it. The link we're asking for is where did the money go? 
Did it go to somebody else? Like, who is it that we actually helped that day? Was it Bob or was it like a 501c3 charity? So it may be Bob. I don't know what you guys do in your neighborhood. All I'm saying is, is if you have that link, if later on somebody was like, I really love petting kitties. It was the absolute best. I want to do that again. And I don't even remember where that place was. They can go to that link and it'll take them back. And that's one of the things that we really encourage with our volunteers is if you had a meaningful experience and by all means, go back and help them again. Mm, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. We have a lot of new foster parents for kitties after that one one. Anyway, so being a charitable ninja. So check your ego. This isn't about you. I mean, yes, if you want to get news and like media attention, that's on you. But sometimes it gets you attention that you may not necessarily want and it puts you under the microscope. So sometimes it's good to do charitable things because you want to do good and not necessarily because you want to be seen doing good, right? Mm -hmm. And we talked about you may be the first burner that they've seen. So you are kind of like bringing a whole new a way of seeing the, the subculture to, to the muggles, to use that word. But sometimes when you're working with conservative organization, they have rules in place for donors that they've had for 50 years and they have, um, they may be really, really conservative and they can't risk getting in trouble with their board by taking money from a group the likes of us. So, so one of the things we do to work around that with conservative organizations is we just make anonymous donations and then they can't say no. And it works really well and they don't get any trouble and we're in like ninjas and ooh, here's a check. And they're like, whoa. Yeah, that's how we donated that $3,000 to the uh, homeless uh, tiny homes. But I didn't need, I, I, I've seen their board, Texas is conservative, we're in the Bible Belt. So we were just like, we're just going to anonymous that. Boop, there it goes. But the, the picture of the check is still on our, our wall as transparency. But from their end, it just came from a private donor that doesn't have any weird affiliations. They have nothing to worry about. Anyways, next, next slide. slide. <laughs> Promoting, we talked about having a social media lead, um, to encourage people to boost the signal, to reply, not just to like. Promote, have your, having the project lead encourages a fresh voice to promote the project. Delegate, don't try and do everything yourself. Like ask your regulars that have been there a lot to consider becoming a board member mm -hmm. or to take over and build you a website or to become a project lead or, right. you know, whatever. We had so many great volunteers that, you know, you see them coming, they're coming to meetings, they're doing projects. And really the next step is, would you like to be involved in a larger capacity and serve on our board? And they're like, oh, that's scary. You know, what is that? Um, and it doesn't have to be scary. Usually, it, you know, it's a reasonable amount of time, minimal requirements or commitments. And so it's just important to know, you know, what those are and your expectations, outline them. And mm -hmm. then nine times out of 10, people are on board. Absolutely. So invite friends, invite everybody else, tell them to invite their friends. But personal contact is really important, especially if you're struggling finding people to lead projects. Sometimes people are well persuaded by being called out and being asked in a personal individual way where you come to this person and go I really see how much you love this thing and I see your passion for it and I was wondering if you would like to lead a work day for us so that we can come and share that with you for a day like can we come and do a work day at your favorite charity and they're like for real it's like yeah and they how many people i don't know 20 40 i don't know <laughs> we just throw it out there and see what happens but it by um by helping people take ownership and pointing them out a lot of times that's really the seed that they needed to plant to really grow and that leads us to talking about community and support your community if you have other burners that are doing charitable projects be supportive ask if they need some volunteers to come by and help ask them if there's an in-kind donation thing you can have everybody do like sometimes we hyper are hyper specific about the thing we ask people to donate because it's something funny like for santa one year i asked everybody at denton santa to just bring like kids breakfast cereal because we thought it would be fun <laughs> because usually it's just these sad little canned goods and it's like 
we're burners. We should bring some fun things. So it was like everybody's favorite cereal from when they were a kid because we thought that would be fun for the kids that are like, you know, what they get their groceries from every week. Next slide, please. Yeah, so we talked about all these things that you can do. We talked about trail work days and stuff and things like that. Disaster relief donations. I highly recommend if you decide to do disaster relief to get involved with CERT, search, but um, have a scheduled amount of time. Like this is my project lasts this long and after this date we're done. Because if you don't, it's really easy to just get sucked in and if you that's what you want, that's great, but sometimes it's healthier for you to have a set amount of time. Yeah, we even did a, uh, a, a dinner meetup where we went to this K that was operate, it was a training program for at-risk youth that were in court systems and they teach them how to be high-end chefs and how to do upscale weight stuff, things like that. And so one of our work days was we all just went to dinner at this place. <laughs> totally counts. And we raised money for a good cause and we're nice and tipped the heck out of the kids. It was great. So next, and we'll post this slide. We'll give this slideshow link to Molly and she can post it so that you can click on the link if you want to see the gifting report and stuff like this. It's how to contact us. Will you go to the next slide real quick? I want to show them some of the other things really quick and then we're done. It, it's not really the shirts. end of the slide, so there's actually more. <laughs> those are, the, those are the, the shirts that we made, if you're curious. You just try and keep it, you know, within the family. That was the, uh, uh, the next slide is the Bad Librarian Bar Hop, where we raised money, and then the trash bags were for the tornado. Next slide. Yeah, that was the... I told you about the cereal. <laughs> That's just some of the cereal. We and we like did a uh, we do, we volunteered sweat equity with this group that did. Uh, they cleaned up senior homes that are have health issues and things like that. We try and have a presence at most of the Santa Cons, and we'll have like a specific stop that's on the route that will have uh, people do the drop off usually at the early part of the night, and that way people don't have to drag can goes around all night long. Next slide. Is that it? Are we on the slides? Yeah, we already looked at this one. Next slide. <laughs> That's the garden. Do it in good weather. You don't want to do it in the heat of the summer. Next slide. Yeah, so as we get to the end here, that may be it. Santa. Yeah, so our Santa Con is on the train and it's a group hop. So you have different stops with like five bars at each stop and people will go and stuff like that. But we take over the train for the night. The dark police think it's our, our the, the train police think it's really kind of funny. So we should probably <laughs> take some questions because we're uh, almost out of time. We're there another slide after this. Yeah. So that's uh, good. Questions. I first just want to say that Nick posted something really beautiful in the chat box. Um, and also, I missed Ursula earlier in the chat box. Sorry, Ursula. When we were talking about transparency, she said, show your impact. More impact and more transparency equals more money, which is totally true. Um, mm -hmm. I wondered if Nick Prince wanted to elaborate on your chat, or would you like me to read this Bible passage? No, read it. it there's a lot of really good things is most of the groups that have been doing uh, the, the deep good humanitarian work out here um as soon as you have to deal with like i would have to say like the evangelical sect if you're dealing with texas stuff i'll say new mexico i feel like we probably have a lot of like similarity there's a number of really good passages that come out but the one that seems to get the most amount of mileage is the matthew 25 uh, 35 through 41 therefore i was hungry and you gave me something to eat i was thirsty and you gave me something to drink i was a stranger and you invited me in I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. And the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick and, or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters, just what you did for me. And like literally every single time I've had to deal with like being freak show, showing up to any kind of stuff right there. There's a couple really good like socialist Jesus like things you can bust out right yes. here. And then all of a sudden, oh, that part of the Bible. Oh, yeah. I almost forgot. I never forgot. So, <laughs> really I, I want to that makes me think of something. So we did a, uh, a homeless feeding, a renegade feeding, where we basically 
brought a, a, a feeding camp on a trailer to the tent city and just broke it out and had it totally mobile so we could get out of there if the police showed up because it's actually illegal. I didn't recommend that you do anything illegal. I'm just saying if food happens to fall off the back of the trailer, have a moop sweep after and clean it all up. But we had put up a little tent and we were giving out barbecue and stuff. We were like, let's not give them sandwiches. Let's give them something badass. Let's give them some barbecue and something really awesome and sodas and like really do it up. And we put like external speakers and had like funk music playing. And one of the ladies that we were helping came up and was like, and one of the things that I, I have to share is we never take pictures of the people that we care of. It's not polite. Don't take a selfie with the people you're helping because they don't want to be the poster boy for homelessness forever. It's just not cool. But this lady came up to us while we were you know, doing the serving line and she was like dancing. She's, she's like, y'all aren't the church people, are you? <laughs> she goes, usually they're trying to make us pray and stuff and you're like, got music and barbecue <laughs> we're like yeah that's right <laughs> we're the other helpers in the neighborhood well thank you guys for coming and talking with us did anybody else have any questions they wanted to ask or comments while we're all on the line together sure i have a question sure um well, first of all, I just wanted to say thank you so much because the work that you're doing in Texas is amazing. I'm from Chicago and um, just uh, been really pleased to work with Burners Without Borders, both um, in Chicago and on the playa as well. And um, I have to admit, um, we do some really great things where we're at here, but um, I haven't really seen this level of organization in, in, on, on a regular basis from, from any other BWB chapters. So I just wanted to congratulate you all, first of all, and say thank you for sharing. Um, also, I was just so I wanted to get a sense of um, so one thing that I, I think we're all really proud of in Chicago is this thing that we do called the Burners Without Borders Community Grant Salon. And um, I don't know if you've heard of it, but basically once uh, twice, twice a year, we, um, we, 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 we basically have a, have a dinner where we accept grant applications and the top four applicants present and then everybody votes and then there's a micro grant of, um, you know, usually a thousand or fifteen hundred that gets put dished out to the winner and then th whatever the door money is then goes to the runner up. And it's really cool because uh, I've seen over the past several years, literally organizations that would have otherwise had no connection, even when they don't win, all of a sudden they're collaborating and doing more work together. Um, and I was curious if you could speak a little bit to how maybe the efforts that you've done in Texas, whether through, maybe not through a grand salon, but in, in the ways that you're talking about, have potentially, if you've seen other community organizations um, be activated by your work? And if there are examples that you might be able to give of, of ways in which you've seen more collaboration among other co community organizations, like aside from just the disaster relief stuff, but also just like the day-to-day -day stuff, like maybe through the Center for the Homeless or, or whatever it may be. Um, and yeah, if you could speak to that a little bit. I think that we are, we're definitely having conversations like this or early, like, so we were having conversations with some of the other chapters in Texas and trying to help them um, get a routine established. Though I, uh, the Corpus Christi chapter was around long before we was we were, and they have their beach burn that they do every year and things like that. And uh, we have different styles for the way that we do our events, but we definitely collaborated. And you mentioned disaster stuff. It was a really way, you know. Your neighbors get hit hard like that, you, even though they're, what, nine hours away? <laughs> they're our neighbors. They're still far. That's how big Texas is. It's, that's not even all the way across. So it, it's like it gave us an opportunity to um, send each other supplies. Like we like sent a school bus full of supplies, and if we sent them a grill to keep and like uh, a generator to use for the week and all sorts of stuff like that. And a, uh, fill the whole thing with diapers and food and all sorts of stuff for them to give out in the community. And, you know, they send, send us resources as well. And so we try and work together to kind of solve those kinds of problems. And, you know, I think we borrow ideas from each other, like we were doing the, the food drive for Santa. And so they did that one year as well so that they, uh, 
because it, it's an easy concept and there's a lot of crossover between Santa and Burns in a lot of areas. So it, it was just, a, it was a natural fit for that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you want to kind of, you've got all these people together and help trying to activate your community to take something that could be really hedonistic or a, and give it a give them an opportunity to do something kind of grounding that you know is thinking outside of your little group of friends and out into the outer you know, the community. I think it's it's a good thing. So I'm really hoping that more locations start using the gifting report because I think it's a really it's a it's a great little spreadsheet to have, but it will help you to have that more transparency with your um, communities and help you. Uh, it, it not only helps you look back at what you've done, but people that didn't get to make that or that are like, I'm new here and I really want to help out. And what are some places that you guys know of that are great? They can kind of touch base with that. And it just kind of helps everybody multiply the effort. We have had issues with people that they get, want to go out and collect money by themselves at some random place without any other helpers. And, we don't do that. We were big believers in the buddy system. <laughs> you need to have some sanctioned and not random and it needs to be for a cause. And, and I don't want to have to question that individual about their spending or drug habits or anything like that. I want to know the money is going to a real life place. Right. But in turn, thank you for what you're doing, because actually what you guys are doing up there in Chicago was what spawned one of our volunteers to get excited about sort of emulating that down here anyway. And that's sort of where the idea for the five fundraiser dinner party came from to begin yes. with. So I think a lot of spawning of ideas that goes on within our community. And that's why I think these community conversations are so great because, you know, here's an idea of something that we can do. and. Um, I may not have been uh, attention to this, but one of the best things I think that Susan does is every time we walk into a meeting, she comes prepared with a few ideas that haven't necessarily come from, you know, anywhere other than just the research that she's done. Like, here's some ideas. And then she talks about them when in the meeting. And then there's always somebody who's sparked their enthusiasm by that. So if I hear about, it, about like, oh, somebody's making sandwiches, then I share that with the group and, hey, do y'all want to make sandwiches? And mm -hmm. a lot of times it's forwards. But um, if you're really stuck for ideas, you can, there's two great websites that I can recommend. One is called Charity Navigator mm -hmm. and one is called Volunteer Match. And both of them totally kick ass because you, uh, can look up the charities in your neighborhood that need volunteers mm -hmm. and it'll tell you what's required and what the ages are because sometimes it's a, a kid friendly thing like a lot of the uh, trail work days and moot patrol at the lake and stuff like that. A lot of those they don't care how old you are as long as the parent is with them and they sign a waiver. So Charity Navigator is really great because you can look you're like do I trust this charity? They seem kind of fishy. You can look them up on that and it will tell you like all of their stuff and their IRS business and all of that stuff. So right. they're and both really handy. It's great. You can just put in a zip code and it's like, oh, here's all these great things happening in my neighborhood mm -hmm. or my community that I, you know, I wasn't even fully aware of. So um, it's cool to see uh, what other people are yeah. doing out there. And if you're looking for the pit count, if you decide you want to do that homeless count that we were talking about, the, uh, the pit count is usually done through homeless coalition. So your county homeless coalition, whatever they're called, they're all different depending on your county. They can tell you like what the dates are and when they have other kinds of events and really help you plug in and meet some of the other people that are providing services in the area that you're in, which is super helpful because that's part of how I get a lot of the ideas because I have friends that do this kind of work with nonprofit too. And we are always like, hey, do you have some extra volunteers? Da, 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 da. So our volunteer coordinator for Burners Without Borders North Texas, Barbios Pearl, mm. she's amazing. Not only is she volunteer coordinator for us, but she does it for regional burn mischievia, and she also helps a suicide prevention charity called Foundation Forty Five. And um, one of we combine forces. We're all about that. So, like when uh, they Foundation Forty Five had a the world's largest water balloon fight in, in entertainment district, just uh, Deep Ellum, and 
you know, they had like baby uh, pools full of, uh, of like tiny uh, water balloons and they gave you water guns and they had a big inflatable water slide and beer sponsors and all that stuff and they needed extra volunteers and Burners Without Borders was like, yes, yes, we will totally volunteer to help you with your many water balloons and craft beer drinking. Yes, sign us up for that. We're in. So, <laughs> so support your community. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because so Pearl is like, is that a conflict of interest? And I was like, the best kind of conflict of interest. Hell yeah, we're in. Sign us up. What time do we need to be there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was great. And like four people showed up, but it was fine. We had a ball. Yeah. Very yeah. cool. Um, I just Thank wanna you. <laughs> I just want to say out loud that we're gonna get the link for Charity Navigator and Volunteer Match into the slide deck um, so that we can all refer back to the slide deck for some of that stuff. Great. Yeah. Those are really great resources and they are across the country and a lot of other countries have similar programs as well. Like in Dallas, there's also the Center for Nonprofit Management and things like that. And um, some of their stuff is on Volunteer Match and other stuff isn't, but you, there's a well of charities right around you that would love to have some extra bodies to help them do their thing. There's some little old person that needs you to help their help you mow their lawn. <laughs> I mean, those right. are things that you so, can do. Really yeah, nice. that's one of the things that's really helped us is, is we're really not inventing the wheel. Um, you know, we're helping other people that have already perfected whatever that is, you know, um, and it keeps people excited and engaged and it, brings in different people to different projects that they're excited about. Uh, I think that's one of the reasons why we've been so successful with uh, mm -hmm. our community here. And some of these charities have incentives for their work days. So if you go to their monthly work day and look it up on their website, if you go on the third Saturday of the month, they'll have free donut and cliff bars and coffee. And, and you're like, I should go and work on that day. That's the right day to go and do that. And your volunteers get excited about it too. And the people at the charity are like just happy that you showed up. So. We're still on the lookout for free mimosas. So if you guys hear of anything, I please let us know. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, well, thanks for coming to our TED Talk. I hope it was helpful for you. If you guys have questions, our email was in the slideshow. We're happy to be helpful. and. Keep doing the good work, you guys, I guess.